Okay, do I really need this, or can you all hear me? I think you are loud enough. Okay. <laughs> yeah, because I, I tell you, I have to do uh, talk aloud uh, many times. So first, I'm going to really talk about a couple of things. Uh, so first, I want to thank uh, Brother Ramsey and Brother Radha Krishna for really hosting this. I tell you, this is one of our fundraisers where our committee didn't have to do anything. I mean, seriously, usually when we do a fundraising, when we host a fundraiser, there are hundreds of people where constantly, Barbara from my campaign team, she's constantly calling, emailing folks, and uh, we are planning the logistics and all of that. So Radha Krishna, this is absolutely phenomenal, and I could not be more thankful. Uh, and I'm sure Barbara is even more thankful I than myself. To, I actually got to eat something. That's it. That's <laughs> it. Really good. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm glad because Barbara, when she's doing all these events for me along with my other campaign team members, she doesn't usually get to eat. Neither do I. So this is the first one that we got to enjoy. Right. Uh, it's like going to the wedding and where you don't have to plan anything. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> so thank you, brother. I, I really appreciate your support. And obviously, Brother Bamsi, who's been with me every step of the way uh, from the moment I had started this journey. So let's give a big round of applause to him. <laughs> so I'm going to talk about a little bit about our journey. So how many of you have seen the documentary about Indian Americans here in our state of North Carolina? It's called Remarkable Journey. Have you watched that documentary? Well, next time, if you do want to watch that, just let me know. I'm happy to bring the producer and director who is from Raleigh area, and he loves doing this kind of outreach in the community. In fact, I'm having a town hall on June 18th. It's going to be on how to do business with the city. Because a lot of our small businesses do not know anything about bidding process with the city. And we have to change that. We have to get equal share of economic opportunities for our community. And that is open to everyone. So how do you get certified? How do you bid on city opportunities? There might be opportunities that may not be available now that you can bid in future. All of that information will be provided at the town hall. Recently, just yesterday, I had an individual called me who is bringing manufacturing jobs in Concord that's not within the city of Charlotte and said hey I heard about this economic incentives that you all provide but I don't know anything about it our one of our community members and I said okay so I had to educate him what it is how he can apply how to qualify for and how I can connect him with the right contacts at the local level and at the state level so they can get economic incentives. If they are bringing in multi-million dollar in investments, multi-million dollars in jobs, um, in paying in property taxes, capital investments, then they got to be able to get the same benefit that so many other businesses get when we try to recruit jobs right here in the state of North Carolina. So here are just some examples that why it's so important to have our representation because when you need something, when you actually have a question or concern or you want to be able to provide that level of exposure to your kids, that's why it's so important to have that representation. I know uh, some of you have asked me about how I ran for an office. Let me tell you, um, I'm a CPA by trade. I'm a numbers person. And politics was something that I had never planned. It just happened. So about six years ago, I had a tragedy in life. And that changed uh, how I saw things in life. That really shook me to the core and made me question what my true purpose was in life. Uh, I had lost my father in a sudden heart attack. And uh, being, a, being a daddy's girl, uh, it was something very difficult uh, and I was devastated and as I was writing his obituary I started uh, writing about what he had done and how he truly made Save a yes there you go you can spread the word and you all can come 
you don't have to be in Charlotte. In fact, uh, we'll be starting to spread the word as well in next couple of days. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have a question you don't have to answer if it's uncomfortable. Um, who is your political role model? Who is my political role model? I do look up to come. Uh, I do look up to Pramila Jaipal. How many of you know about Pramila? Okay. So Congresswoman Pr Pramila, I love her because her story resonates with me so much. She immigrated here when she was 16, just like I did. Um, she went through some of the struggles that I've gone through, being a brown woman, where we often get attacked and we get death threats and all of that. And she's gone through that way before I did. Uh, and I certainly look up to her and with grace, so much grace that she answers every question and she responds to uh, media and so on. And I hope to have that one day. <laughs> Anything else? What's your goal, final goal in politics? Well, I don't really have necessarily a goal per se in terms of position, though I would like to uh, do a couple of things. So on city council last year, I'm going to keep it very brief. I know you sent out some uh, accomplishments that we've been able to do yeah. uh, but after Trump administration decided to pull out of Paris climate agreement how many of you know about Paris climate agreement okay many of you so after Trump decided to pull out of the Paris climate agreement a lot of local elected officials had to take a leadership <coughs> role and our city took a leadership role and said, guess what? Whatever happens in DC, we are going to take a bold step right here at the local level and announce our plan to go carbon free for our city operations by 2030 and for our community citywide operations by 2050. Right after passing that resolution unanimously, which I led the effort for, uh, we put together strategic plan a strategic energy action plan, which is the first document city ever created, which is hundreds of pages, to transition to a low carbon future. And right after passing the strategic energy plan, Mayor Bloomberg came to town and he awarded us $2.5 million in resources to fight climate change. And we won American Cities Climate Challenge. So my, my goal, to your point, this is a long answer to your question, but my goal is for us to take intentional steps to meet 2030 and 2050 goals to leave a better planet behind for our younger generations. When you think about most polluted cities in the world, almost 10 out of 20 cities are in India. It's toxic. Someone told me the other day, sent me an article, it's like breathing in India, especially in new big, big cities, is like smoking 20 packs of cigarettes a day. That's how unhealthy it is. We cannot make that, we, we cannot let that happen here for our younger generation. There are 25 million kids under the age of five dying from carbon pollution. That's three times more than combined with malaria, AIDS, and tuberculosis. That's a shame on us. We can do better. We have to leave a better planet behind for our younger generation so we can breathe easily. So many of our younger generation cannot breathe. They have asthma issues by the, by, by the age they are two and three. So many of them. Because our air quality is so poor, our water quality has gone down, and we must change that. We got to leave a better planet behind for them. And my goal that the goals that we have approved last year is for us to actually put that in practice and meet those goals. So I hope that uh, you know we'll do our part in uh, leaving a better planet behind for for our younger generations. Un unfortunately, the climate change has become such a partisan issue. It is not. It's about the air, it's about the water, it's about the energy, it's about the soil. It has nothing to do with Democrats and Republicans. And once people would start to understand that, hopefully we will be able to do something about it. So at the local level, we were able to pass both the resolution and the strategic plan unanimously. Both Democrats and Republicans supported it. 
And that's why we send a very strong message out nationally that, guys, this is not a partisan issue. Let's work together. This is about what kind of environment we want to leave behind for our younger generation. So, sorry, long answer to your question. <laughs> <laughs>